Okay, uh, this quick little lesson. We've got uh, covalent versus ionic bonds. They're both types of molecular bonds. I'm going to do a really simple explanation of an ionically bonded molecule, very well known NaCl, sodium chloride, otherwise known as table salt. Um, so I have a Lewis dot structure of each of those um, atoms on the top and a Bohr model of each of them on the bottom. Notice that both Sodium and chlorine are on that third row of elements on the periodic table, so that represents how many energy levels they have. Each of them has three. Um, sodium only has one valence electron, represented in the Lewis dot structure here, whereas chlorine has seven valence electrons, represented in the Lewis dot structure here. And with ionic bonding, it's easy to remember because, um, well, with covalent, you share electrons between the, molecule, or between the atoms, and with ionic, you give or take. So in this case, we see sodium with one electron hanging out in the valence shell, and chlorine just needing one more to have a full shell. So if sodium loses this one, it'll actually be more satisfied. It has an affinity for uh, the electron configuration if it were to not even have that electron on the valence shell, it would just drop back to its next level. This level would be the valence shell then, and it would have a full set of eight. Uh, it would feel like it's a noble gas, right, as far as electron configuration. So it would be uh, happy, right? So it would be more than willing to give that electron up. And chlorine, on the other hand, just needs one more to fill its outermost shell. To, so it's satisfied and feels like it's a noble gas. So it would be more than happy to take that one from uh, sodium in this case. And then what you have after that exchange is one fewer electron with the sodium. So if you have one fewer of a negative charge, that means you're going to have a positive one charge. And then since chlorine is going to be picking up an extra negative particle, that means that they would have a negative one charge. So in many cases, opposites attract. So we would have an uh, ion of chlorine bonding ionically with a ion of sodium. So, and then to show that down here in my Bohr model, you'd just be removing this guy and putting it right there, going that way. And then this would just erase off What do you do there? Sodium is happy, chlorine is happy, they both have full valence shells. They are now in a stable electron configuration. Okay? Uh, let me pause it and we'll set up for the next one for the covalent bond. Okay, so we're set up for our uh, example, simple explanation of a covalently bonded molecule, and I always like using the example of CH4 or methane. So we've got our carbon in Lewis dot structure and hydrogen, uh, carbon and hydrogen in our Bohr model uh, as well. And you can see, of course, that carbon only has four. It wants to have eight. Hydrogen has just one. It wants to have two. Why that number is not a magical number. That would be if the same electron configuration is as their uh, corresponding noble gas. Okay. So each of them wants to have a full valence shell. In this case, instead of a give-take, they're going to share electrons. And by sharing electrons, they're going to feel like they're, they've got a full set. Um, so with methane, uh, you end up with four hydrogens bonding to carbon by sharing each their one to carbons four. And I, I kind of look at these like Legos sometimes with the Lewis dot structure. So like hydrogen here by itself, it, it's almost like it has a docking port. It's like it has this empty spot for an electron to go. So when it pulls up next to carbon, carbon's electron can dock right in. And the same thing goes for carbon. And actually, one of the reasons that carbon is so common in life forms and in hydrocarbons, like fuels and things like that, or in this case, the methane, which is a fuel, is um, 
it's got four empty docking ports. It's the most you can have, right? So, uh, and, and be the, the, the easiest to bond with. So in this case, four hydrogens can, can dock in and bond with carbon. So each of the hydrogens feels like it has two electrons. And each carbon feels like it has a full set of eight. So everybody's happy. So again, covalent bonding, you're sharing, like in this example. Ionic bonding, you're giving or taking electrons, and then you end up with uh, an opposite charge, and that's what holds you together. So that's it. Have a good one.